Hello, and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you on. In this webcast, we will be going over our latest release, 11.4, where we have several new features to help improve efficiency. My name is Agnes, and I work on the marketing programs team here at GitLab. I'm joining you from Jakarta, Indonesia today. Also joining us this afternoon is Elsha from Marketing, James from Product, and Muhammad from Support. We are going to give people just a couple more minutes to get logged on. While we are waiting, I'm going to launch a poll. You can take part in if you like. The graphic on the next slide may be useful as you think through your answer for the, your first poll question. Thank you to everyone who participated in the poll. Before we get started, I'm going to cover a couple of housekeeping items. First, feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen for that. We'll get a time for questions at the end, but you can go ahead and send in your questions as you think of them, and we'll make sure to get to them during the Q&A session. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, you can use that function to get in touch with me, the moderator. Great help. Now I'm going to turn it over to Elsha to talk about the poll results. Good morning. It's really good to meet you all. Actually, good afternoon. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually based in the UK, based from Cornwall. Um, we're all remote here at GitLab. And as you can tell from where all the other people are based that are on this presentation. So uh, it's really interesting to see the results. I can see a cross section of um, choices that you've all made. We've got um, you know, quite a few people using it for the create and package areas of the product. But as well as that, we've got people um, using GitLab's manage plan, verify and release as well. And we've also got um, somebody, I think it's maybe one or two people who don't use GitLab at all. So um, hopefully you'll be able to get quite a lot out of this presentation. The person is not currently using GitLab. Um, but maybe after the event, we can send you a link to a generic demo of GitLab as well. Um, so let's see what's happening in 11.4. So we release every month on the 22nd. This is our 88th monthly, consecutive monthly release. And uh, it's quite an exciting release. And um, I'm very excited as um, we're always talking about improving efficiency across the whole life cycle of, uh, of software. And um, one of our uh, values at GitLab is also efficiency. And we take that to heart and try and put that into all the areas of um, of GitLab as a product. Um, people are trying to work on planning and managing their products through to verifying and releasing that I can see of the people that have completed this poll. Um, and as well as that, as I mentioned, people working on it just using source control, which is fine, but we also have all the other features available within GitLab. Um, right, on to the next uh, slide, bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to give you an overview of all the um, things that we've released in 11.4. Um, let's have a quick look. It's really about how we help improve efficiency across the life cycle um, and capabilities and features that we release. Um, 
what we want to do is uh, be able to make people deliver more eff effectively and efficiently and not spend so much time working on uh, what you're actually doing. So we try and do as much of the work for you as we can. And we're going to be talking about code reviews, how we've made code reviews easier with merge request reviews and suggested approvers. And we're also going to be looking at feature flags. And uh, for relevance sake, let's pause and take a poll to see how many of you are currently using the feature flags within GitLab. Um, Agnes will pull up a poll for you now. Okay, so it looks like 75% um, of you are not currently using um, these. So this is something that James will cover in the demo part of this presentation a bit later on in, the, um, uh, in this presentation. Uh, moving down the list, we've also had a pretty cool update where we've moved CI YAML into core, which is our free edition of GitLab. And lastly, we're gonna be looking at a couple of other pieces around the file tree and uh, tables. Um, Okay, let's go on to the next page. Oh, bear with me. All right, suggested reviewer was a feature that we've that we've now built on. We started off with just code owners in our last release, and then in this release, we're starting to roll in the idea of who should be selected or involved in reviewing a merge request. With this, we're now able to um, suggest, and you'll be able to see in the demo later, as to who would be involved in reviewing the specific change. The idea here is to make it easier for you to know who should be reviewing code, but also who should be involved in making those changes and who should be approving those changes before they go live. We will look at those uh, in the demo with James. Another thing that we noticed was that anytime people are doing updates or commenting on a merge request, we'd end up with a series of comments and subsequent notifications to each of the users. So you'd end up getting hit with lots of notifications as people were making comments. With 11.4, we've, int we've introduced batch comments, uh, which means that we'll be bringing comments into one consolidated review. So as you're making comments, you can set them up and effectively stage in your comments so that it comes out as one notification back to the team uh, rather than uh, lots of different notifications. So GitLab YAML. So um, in the spirit of trying to help everyone be more effective and efficient, it is one of GitLab's values after all, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we've been hearing from a lot of people in the GitLab community about the power and the usefulness of having include files and making them available for everyone. Up until now, they were only available in our uh, charged for GitLab starter um, edition. So responding to everyone's feedback, we've now moved the YAML include files into the free core uh, community edition, making it an open source capability. And uh, when we move features back into core, they will always stay there. It's not something that we will take away in the future. Um, anyway, so this is gonna make it easier to manage how you go about planning your CI pipelines and um, so that you can have multiple include files rather than having all of the details in your YAML repeat. So you can have a single include file to manage everything faster and again, improving efficiency. Um, feature flags, uh, exciting, a new feature and an alpha feature coming up into this release is the capability to have feature flags built into GitLab. With feature flags, what you can do is uh, turn on or turn off specific features in your application, and you can manage all of that from within GitLab. We'll demo that in just a few minutes, but what it will do is help you go faster um, in your releases. Feature flags is something that we're looking to continue to iterate on as we move forward. File tree browsers. Now, um, one of the frequent problems or challenges with a complex merge request is that there's a lot of different files included in it. Um, being able to understand where they're at, the directory and what files you're actually changing, um, what we've done is an update to improve the merge request so that you can navigate the file tree and understand which of the files are changing and the status of those. Um, again, this makes it a lot more efficient and makes it easier to update and manage your merge requests. Onto the markdown table button. Um, one of the last uh, big improvements, and it's one that's quite exciting because managing tables was quite difficult in the past. Um, this is a contribution from one of our community. We've got um, 2,000 um, 
core members who actually help provide um, changes to GitLab. And what they've done is add the ability to add a markdown table right from within the editor to make it um, easy to build out these tables. And it's great to see this added here. It's going to make a lot of people's lives more efficient and more effective. As before, it used to involve a lot of um, cutting and pasting. And now it's just provide automatically from within GitLab. So I hope I've um, gotten through most of the highlights. It was just a summary, but what James is going to do now for us is uh, go through all these highlights and um, start with a demo. And I'll hand it over to you, James. Thanks, Elsha. Um, I'm really excited to show you a couple of the new features um, that Elsha mentioned that we introduced in GitLab 11.4. Um, and I think the best way to do that is with a demo, so you can uh, really see them in action. All right. So I hope you can see my entire screen. Um, the first improvement that um, I'd like to show you is, uh, is around the, um, the merge request review. So this is a merge request that um, I've been working on. I'm trying to add a new feature to our API to emulate a force push from the command line with Git. Um, it's still very incomplete, but um, I'll show you what the, the changes view looks like. Um, so here we are, I'm looking at some of the, the code that I've changed. Um, and one of the classic problems of code review is that I'll notice something up here. So maybe, maybe this line doesn't really make sense um, to me when I'm reading it. Like this, this maybe shouldn't be a bool. I think we use some other pattern instead. So I'll leave a comment down there, but then I'll, I'll read a couple of lines or files further down and all of a sudden that change is explained by the later change. And so I've just left an irrelevant comment, um, which is confusing noise in the merge request and just, uh, it's a waste of my time and a waste of other people's time. Um, and so one of the things we've introduced is this merge request review feature. So now when I click on this and start leaving a comment, um, this should be an integer, for example, I can start a review. Um, this is in addition to the option we already had before, which was to leave a comment immediately, but I'm going to start a review. Um, and we can see that my comment is pending. Um, it hasn't been submitted yet. Um, down here, I can maybe highlight that I think this test case description um, uh, isn't obvious. Um, so maybe I should choose a better, better test case description there. Um, I'll scroll down, see if I can spot any other changes. Oh, this is a bit of a warning sign. I've got an unimplemented feature here. So this needs to be removed. Um, and so as you can see, I've got this little submit button down here. It's telling me I've got three comments now. And as I go and add more comments, um, this is running on a fork. So um, remove. Um, the number continues to grow and I can quickly jump back and maybe my first comment is less relevant now. I now I'm convinced after reading this that it should be a bull and I can either edit this, maybe change my comment or I can delete it. So this is a really nice way for me to just go through, leave a bunch of comments, then review my comments and then submit them in one go. And when I'm done, I can click submit. The other, the other challenge associated with merge requests is navigating. I'm sure you're confused looking at me scroll through this file, what I'm looking at. There's a lot of different, there's at least four or five different files that have changed and it's just this wall of green and red text. Um, and so what we've introduced is a file browser to help us get a better sense of which files have changed, how much and switch between them. So um, I can now just click on any file and jump around the merge request and immediately end up in the file that I'm looking for. I can also search it. So if I'm specifically interested in the, the JSON file, I can filter for that or uh, maybe I only want to look at tests and I can see, oh, here's the test that I'm editing. Um, and so this makes it much easier to navigate um, even relatively small merge requests, but particularly large merge requests where maybe 50 to 100 files are changed. This feature really improves the efficiency in doing a review um, and leaving feedback and understanding what's going on. So these are two of the biggest changes that we've made to merge requests um, in GitLab 11.4. They both really improve the efficiency of the review process for the code reviewer, but they also review, uh, they also improve um, just the navigation of the merge request for the author or anyone else who's coming to look at the merge request. 
Okay, the next feature I'd like to show you is feature flags. And so the, the idea of feature flags is essentially so that you can toggle different features in your application without deploying a new version of it. So this is useful if you've got um, maybe a feature that you only want to um, toggle on for maybe like 30 minutes or 10 minutes when you first release it because you're unsure of the impact it's going to have at production scale. Uh, and so you can do that remotely from um, a feature flag toggling tool um, so that that's, that's much easier than it would be otherwise. So to demonstrate what this looks like, I've got a little demo app. I've got a Hello World app. I'll just reload the page so you can see it's, it's serving. Um, and I'll show you the source code quickly. So GitLab uses the Unleash library for feature flags. Um, and you can see I've included the Golang uh, library for Unleash here. Um, got some configuration, which I'll show you in the GitLab interface in a second. But what I'd like to highlight is that I've got this special feature here. So when we're generating the page, there's this get name function. And in it, there's this special if gate, which says if unleash is enabled, if the unleash feature flag greeting is enabled, we're going to use this name query parameter. So this is just, I'm just getting the query parameter name and its value. But otherwise, we're going to use world. And so this is the original functionality, and this is a new functionality. And so you can see, I'll reload it. We don't have a query parameter, so it says hello world. But if I go name equals James, nothing happens. So the reason is that the feature flag is set to false. And so the feature flag management interface is in the operations area of GitLab, of our project. So I'll go to feature flags. And you can see I've got an inactive feature flag for the greeting um, feature, which shows you a personalized greeting. If I click edit and activate it, you can see that the feature flag was updated. And if I go back to my demo application, I'll change that to John while I'm at it. Let's try a different name. Now you can see immediately the feature has been activated in real time. I haven't done anything. Um, I haven't recompiled my application. I haven't redeployed it. It's just running and the behavior has changed. Um, if I change that. Um, and then if I turn it off, we can see that it's, it'll go back to normal as well. slight delay I think there we are hello world um, so I mentioned there's some configuration involved in setting this up so you'll need to use the um, the unleash library as I mentioned um, it's available in quite a few different languages and also when you're using it you'll need to make use of the API URL instance ID and application name which is available um, here and also there are links to the documentation to, to get you up and running and uh, that's feature flags. Um, I'll open it up to questions now. Thanks, James, for the uh, super informative demo. Um, I haven't seen any uh, questions yet. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit that. While we're waiting, um, maybe we can kind of go through some questions that uh, we've seen come up so far. Um, so maybe the first one, James, uh, can you share a little bit on what language are supported in the by the feature flags? Absolutely. So um, the Unleash library supports quite a few. There are four official clients, one for Java, Node, Go, and Ruby. And there's also community contributed um, Unleash libraries as well for .NET and also for Python. Uh, you can read about this in the GitLab documentation, as well as there's links directly to the Unleash documentation. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for sharing that. I guess if there's no other questions, maybe we'll close up with one last question that we have seen come up as well, uh, really around where suggested reviewers uh, features go going. So if you can share a little bit on that one. Sure. So the, the suggested approvers feature is um, 
really just the next step in where we've been going with code owners. So as Elsha mentioned, um, we released code owners um, in the previous release of 11.3, where you could define um, based on a file path pattern, who was the responsible developer for a specific area of the code base. And then in 11.4, um, we, we've been trying to look at how we apply that and make that more relevant. We made the first step to introduce it into the uh, merge request approval process by suggesting those. Um, in the, the next release, we will automatically assign those. So if you've got a code owner's file, you won't have to click a button to add the suggested approvers. Those approvers will just be added. And then um, beyond that, we want to take it to another place where you, we can require approvers approval from code owners. And this is going to give you an extra layer of structure and enforcement for um, I guess projects that really require that extra rigor. And we know that um, some, particularly our larger customers that um, have compliance processes and policies internally, um, adding that additional layer of structure to make sure the right people approve the merge request and see the merge request um, every single time without fail is really important to them. And that's, that's where we're headed over the next couple of releases. Great, sounds exciting. So I guess if we don't have any questions, uh, maybe James, you can uh, proceed with sharing uh, a little bit about the upcoming release. Sure, I'm very excited about um, 11.5. I've been working on writing the release notes and testing it um, the last week or so. Um, some of the particularly exciting improvements are parallel CI jobs. Um, we've been making some improvement to the merge request widgets and the way discussions are um, presented. Um, also, as I mentioned, we're adding automatic assignment of code owners um, as approvers in merge requests, and that's uh, really exciting. Um, and there's a, there's a whole lot more coming as well. So that's, that's just a little taste of uh, what's in the next release. Um, so stay tuned. That comes out on the 22nd of November. Um, you can read more in the release post when that goes up or join us next month for our 11.5 release radar. Okay, so let me just close up then um, by saying that we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's demo. Uh, we would really appreciate your responses to our webinar survey. I'll drop the link to the survey in the chat. Uh, we would also like to invite you to sign up for a free trial of GitLab Ultimate. We hope you're excited to see what your team can do with it. I'll chat that link as well. And finally, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach us via our sales contact page about.gitlab.com sales. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us.